Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're dealing with steady state AC analysis. And we have, we're going to use the mesh method to analyze this particular circuit. So the first thing we do is redraw it and we find that we have omega as 2 just like we did in the last example and so we use the formula j omega l to find out our impedance of the inductor and then we merely add it to the rail part so that it becomes a z so the one in the complex number at the bottom there in orange comes from the resistor which is in series with the coil. When they're in series we can add them and if they're in parallel we have to use the parallel formula. Remember the parallel formula for resistors is R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. So it applies just as just as readily for complex numbers as it does for resistors and we can easily find the equivalent circuit using that formula. So we do the same thing for the capacitors now. The capacitors is worked out as 1 over omega c and so we find the impedance for the capacitors at omega of 2 and we realize now that we have an interesting situation here because our current source at the top is specified as sine rather than cos. We take the cos as zero phase angle because cos starts at a 1 at 0 and sine is behind it. When cos moves to 0, sine moves to 1. So we have a 90 degree phase lag between our two current sources. So that is why the sine, at the sine 1 for the top current source is minus 90 instead of anything else and of course the minus 90 means that the actual source can be represented as minus j1 then we put in our current loops we have a super mesh there where we're including one gigantic kvl loop and we write the equation for that one because the other the others are easy because they just depend on the individual source and you can follow that through it's a kvl equation and remember that the terms of a kvl equation are voltages so we have the voltage V1, which is what we're trying to find. Then we have Ri, or more specifically Zi. Remember V equals to Ri or Ir, V equals Ir or V equals Iz. So it's really a Z, not an R at all. But the voltage across Z is going to be the impedance times the current. So once again, the procedure is as simple as it is when just dealing with resistors. Okay, we have one other constraint on it. And that is to notice a KCL at the bottom of the inductor. And I've highlighted that there in blue to explain where everything comes from. The 
voltage is actually the current in blue multiplied by the impedance. We know that the impedance is J1 and the current will have to be 4 minus I based on KCL. Okay, so we take those two equations now and we're going to solve them. The first thing we're going to do is to make I the subject of the second equation. And this shows you clearly in the orange how we make I the subject of that equation when dealing with complex numbers. Once we've made I the subject, we substitute it for every occurrence of I in the top, which is shown there in the brackets. You can follow the algebra. And then we multiply it out. Get rid of the brackets. Gather up the terms. And find V1 by normal algebra. And then convert it from a polar form. Sorry, convert it from a rectangular form to a polar form. And finally, we can write the polar form as an amplitude and a phase angle. So that, in green, is the time domain solution for V1. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.